everyone welcome back to WS Cube in our today's session we will be learning about data types and user inputs before we start with that let's have a small recap on the previous session in our previous session we learned how to create variables and what are the simple rules of writing a variable I hope that session was clear to you and if you have any doubts you can again go through the session and then we can start again with data types also, if you want to become a successful data analyst and you want to learn from our industrial experts, then you may call on the number given below or you can also click on the link given in our description. Not just that, with our every batch, you will be getting two demo classes for free. So let's get started, guys. So what are data types? You, you might have heard this term before, data. Yes, data and types you might have heard as a two different words before. Together, it's a data type. Data type are the values, the type of data that we can store inside a variable, whether we are writing a combination of characters inside it, whether we are using a numbers inside it, a decimal numbers inside it, whatever we are using inside it, those are called as data types that what kind of type, what type of data we are inserting inside a variable. So Python has many data types. Let's have a look on them. Python has a text type data type which is strings. Inside a string, you can write the combination of letters, combination of uh, letters, numbers, and special symbols. In the numeric types, we have integers, floating point, complex. There might be some uh, terms that are really new to you. So, as of now, just understand that these are the types of data, but then we will be covering all the topics in our upcoming sessions. So, we have sequence types that is lists tuples and range. We have ma mapping types that are dictionaries, short form is DICT. Set type, we have set and frozen set. Boolean type, Boolean gives us true or false for a particular condition. So, bool. Binary types, we have bytes, byte array and memory view. So, here are some example of data types. You can once go through them. But yes, we will be discussing them in details in our upcoming session. So these are some data types that you can use inside the variable names. We have learned in our previous session how to write a variable. In our today's session, we will be learning how to take user inputs. Now, what is a user input? User input is nothing but taking an input from the user about your basic details any or any, any details that you want to take from the user. Suppose you are creating a sign-in form. You want to take details from the user like uh, what is your name, what is your age, what is your date of birth. And what is your gender? So you're taking an input from the user, just like how we go to a new website. And when they ask us to sign in, they ask us for the details like enter your name here, or maybe enter your username here, enter your age here, enter your gender here, enter your password here. So they are asking details for us. Similarly, here also we will be asking details from the user. We will be learning how to ask for these details. Let's have a look at the example. Okay. So let's have a look on how to write a user input, how to take the input from the user. So I'm creating a variable over here called as name. So N A N E is equals to input because I'm taking an input from the user. That's why I will be writing the word input over here, followed by parentheses that are the curved brackets and double quotations that enter your name here. Followed by a colon. Colon is not required, but yes, again, it makes my program looks nice and clean. That's why I'm using a colon and a, a little space for the user to write something over there. And then I'm going to print it. So, print name. Let's see what happens when we run the program. It says, enter your name here. So, I'll write. It prints one. Whatever name you will write over there, it will automatically print over there. The right hand side prints. Lisa for me. So it's taking the input from the user and printing it right away. Also, you can ask for different things. Age. Now, age uses integer. Integer. Okay. So there are uh, some important data types that we will be discussing here. The first one was string. String was the one where you can use a combination of letters, numbers, and symbols. Everything written inside the double quotations comes in a part of a string. So let's say, okay, another thing about taking user input is that the default which has been set for taking a user input is string. 
if you have not mentioned that you want the input in uh, integer or in floats or in any other digit type then it the default is set to string let's say i want to take a input in integer so i'll add a comment over here taking input in integer right how to take an input in integer i'll write age age obviously is a number integers are all the numbers positive negative all the numbers comes in the category of integers but not the decimal ones those comes in the category of floats which we will be discussing right after this so let's understand integers for integers i'll be writing int int is the short form that we will be using int input enter your age here and print age now if i run the program it asks me enter your name here so in the name let's say i have written john in the in the age i'll write john is 23 years old it prints 23 for me so this is how it works if i would have not written int over here and i would have used a string over here like not written anything it would have given me the age in 23 here in the terms of age it is fine that if it prints it in a string but let's say if you're uh, doing a mathematical operation in mathematical operation if you're taking a user input in string it won't work let's have a look with on that as well let's say here i'm writing number one is equals to input enter a number here and number two is equals to input enter another number here so person will randomly write any number and what I'll do, I'll, I'll write the addition of this. So print number one plus number two. Right. Let's run and see what happens. Where in the name I'll be writing John. In the age I'll be writing 23. And enter the number I'm writing 12 plus 13. It gives me 1, 2, 1, 3. It's basically adding both the strings. It's not adding the numbers. It's adding both the strings. Now, let's see what happens if I write int in front of it. So, if I write int input and close the brackets in the end. Again, if I write int input and close the brackets in the end. And now, if I run the program, so name is john who is 23 years old i'm getting to know this guy john 12 30 it gives me 25 so you can see here uh, while doing the mathematical operations we can use the terms integers and if you don't need really need it then yes you can use we can actually avoid writing int if you it, it's not really required but yeah, in mathematical operations, we can use it. Coming to the next part, we have decimal numbers. So, yes, we can write positive numbers in the categories of integers and negative numbers in the categories of integers. But what about the numbers which have decimals? For those, we have floating points that are called as floats. So, I'll write taking input in decimal number. So, let's say I'll write um, number 3 is equals to float input enter a number here and print number three okay to avoid writing all these things again again i'll put it inside the comments and if i run the program let's say um i write over here 23 even though I'm writing 23, it convert, it's, even though it's an integer, it's converting it into a floating point. And while it's not the same when we are writing an integer, if you're if you're asking a user input an integer and you end up writing something float, or even after addition, multiplication, division, or subtraction by applying any of the operators, if you get the output in float, that would be an error. So yes, uh, for the decimals, we need to take remember using float. The short form is float and the complete is floating point. They are called as floating points. The short form is float. So float input enter a number here. 
so these are three majors one more is there that is called as the next thing is that evil evil stands for evaluate when you want to evaluate any algebraic of expression or you want to solve any equation you can use evaluate let's see how it is done evaluating an equation to evaluate an equation i'm creating a um, variable called as number 4 number 4 is equal to eval input eval is the short form for evaluating and write um expression here i'll be enclosing it inside double quotations now print number 4 let's see what happens when we run it I'll enter a number here. Let's say twenty-three. Twenty-three. Let's write an expression over here, or maybe an equation over here. So I'll write twelve plus thirteen. Okay, it gives me the output as twenty-five. Let's say I'll run it again, and I'll tell it to print "Hello World." It will print me "Hello World." So you can see over here. that not just with the equations but anything that you write uh, in a python statement it can evaluate it and give you the output over here that is what evaluate is used for the short form is even so in this session we learned what are data types and what are the different types of data types we have how we can take the input from the user how we can take the user input in a name in an integer in an float in how we can evaluate a equation or an expression given by the user i hope you have no doubts and no questions in this session and so in our next session we will be learning about type casting and its sub types we will be discussing it on brief i hope the session was all clear to you and you have no doubts and no questions so if you enjoy the session stay connected to it and i'll see you in the next session